Hi friends, did you know that if you applied Newton's equation force equals mass times acceleration for the rocket launch of the Chandrayaan-3 mission, then your calculations will go wrong and it won't land on the moon. But, but how is that possible? F equal to ma is derived from Newton's second law of motion. Newton can't be wrong. Let's learn about Newton's second law of motion in this video and understand why the equation F equal to ma will not work for the rocket launch. I will explain the concepts in a simple way and I'm sure Newton's second law of motion will be crystal clear after the video. So let's dive right into it. Newton's second law of motion states that the rate of change of momentum of a body is directly proportional to the applied force and it takes place in the direction in which the force acts. I know the law sounds complicated with lots of physics words in there. But don't worry, we are going to break it down and understand it in a simple way. First, let's talk about momentum. What is momentum? Momentum measures the amount of motion that an object has. Momentum is equal to the mass of the object multiplied by its velocity. Momentum is a vector quantity, which means that it has both a magnitude, a value and a direction. The direction of momentum is the same as the direction of the object's velocity. Momentum measures the amount of motion in an object, or you can say how dangerous a moving body is. For example, if I ask you, what is more dangerous, a coconut falling from a tree or a bullet fired from a gun? To find the answer, you can watch my video on what is momentum. So do check out this video. Now let's continue on this second law. The second law mentions the rate of change of momentum. This means how fast the momentum of a body changes when you apply a force. Change of momentum can be calculated as final momentum minus the initial momentum. And rate means divided by the time taken. So what is the rate of change of momentum? It is going to be the change of momentum divided by the time. The second law states that the rate of change of momentum is directly proportional to the applied force. So let's understand this with a simple example. Let's say you're traveling by car and it's your bad luck that your car broke down. The engine is not working. So now you need to push the car along the road. Now before you apply the force, the car is at rest. So what is the initial momentum here? That's right, zero, since the initial velocity is zero. Now, as you keep applying the force for some time, let's say 10 seconds, the car picks up a speed of two meters per second. Let's say the mass of your car is about 1000 kgs. So what is the final momentum? It is the mass times the velocity. That is 1000 kgs times two meters per second. So the final momentum is gonna be 2000 kg meter per second. Now what is the rate of change of momentum here? It is the change in momentum divided by the time. So it's going to be the final momentum minus the initial momentum divided by the time you push the car. So it's going to be 2000 minus zero divided by 10, which is 200 kg meter per second square. So that is your rate of change of momentum, 200 kg meter per second square. Now, if two people push the car, then a greater force will be applied. Obviously, the car is going to gain more speed, right? So the rate of change of momentum will be more. And if you apply a smaller force, the car will gain a lower speed. So the rate of change of momentum is going to be lesser. And that's exactly what Newton's second law of motion says, that this rate of change of momentum is directly proportional to the force that you're applying. If you double the force applied, the rate of change of momentum will get doubled. In this case, if we push the car with double the force for the same time, the speed of the car will get doubled. Similarly, if you apply half the force, then the speed will be halved. And so the rate of change of momentum is also going to be half. 
So see, it's so simple. And the change of momentum will obviously happen in the direction of the force. So for example, if you apply the force towards the east, then obviously the change in momentum will happen towards the east in the same direction. Mathematically, we can represent the second law as force is directly proportional to delta P divided by delta T. Here delta P represents the change in momentum because remember P is the symbol of momentum and delta T is the time taken. We can change this directly proportional relation into an equation by using a constant of proportionality k. So the equation becomes force F equals k times delta P divided by delta T. Luckily for us, the scientists defined the SI unit of force, Newton, in such a way that this constant is equal to 1. So the equation becomes simple, F equal to delta P divided by delta T. In our car example, the change in momentum was 2000 kg meter per second and it took 10 seconds. So what is the rate of change of momentum? It was 200 kg meter per second square. So according to our formula, the force applied is the rate of change of momentum. So the force applied is going to be equal to 200 kg meter per second square or 200 Newton. Newton and kg meter per second square is the same unit. Newton is basically the short form for kg meter per second square and as you know it is the SI unit of force. The equation F equal to delta P divided by delta T is valid for any time interval. It can be a big time interval like 10 seconds or even more or the time interval can be really small like 1 second 0.1 second, 0.01 second or even smaller. As the time interval delta t gets close to zero, in the language of calculus, we say limit delta t tending to zero, then this equation becomes f equal to dp by dt. So see we are using calculus here and we say force equals to the differentiation of momentum with time, dp by dt. So you can remember the equation according to second law, force is equal to delta P by delta T and for a small time interval, we can write F equal to dP by dT. As we have discussed, momentum P equals mass times velocity. So if we substitute P equal to mv in our equation, F equal to delta P by delta T, we are going to get F equal to delta mv divided by delta t. If the mass of the body is constant, like in our car example, we can bring the mass outside and our equation becomes F equal to m delta v divided by delta t. Now what is delta v by delta t? It is the rate of change of velocity, right? And what's that? It's acceleration. So our equation becomes F equal to m a the famous equation force equals mass times acceleration. What is the assumption in this equation? The mass of the body should be constant. Only if the mass is constant, we can use the equation F equal to ma. You can remember this equation as fun equals Manocha Academy. Now you will get the same equation if you use F equal to dp by dt the equation based on calculus, right? So if you substitute momentum P as mv, we get F equal to dmv by dt, which is m goes outside because it's constant. So m times dv by dt, which is ma. So again, we are getting force equal to mass times acceleration. And remember the assumption, mass should be constant. Now, can you tell me why the equation F equal to ma does not work for the rocket launch of the Chandrayaan-3 mission. Remember during the rocket launch, the rocket is rapidly burning a huge amount of fuel inside it. The mass of the fuel inside the rocket is decreasing. So the mass of the rocket is decreasing. Mass is not constant here. 
and that is exactly why we can't use the equation f equal to ma since mass needs to be constant for us to use this equation. But then what do we do? You can still use the equation f equal to delta p by delta t or if you write it as f equal to dp by dt that is force equals to the rate of change of momentum. This equation is absolutely valid because it does not have the assumption that mass should be constant. So for your correct calculations, you should be using these equations and not f equal to ma. Then you will get your calculations correct. Now let's try this question. Let's say the motion of the body of mass m is given as x equal to 10 t square where t is the time and x is the displacement. You need to find the force on this body. Now how do you calculate the force? The formula of force according to Newton's second law is f equal to dp by dt which is equal to dmv by dt. Since the mass of the body is constant, we can say f equals m dv by dt. Now velocity is the rate of change of displacement. So we can use the formula velocity equal to dx by dt. See we are using all the equations of calculus here. Now substituting x equal to 10 t square, we get velocity v equals ddt of 10 t square. So that's going to be 10 times ddt of t square which is 10 times 2t. So we are getting 20t as the velocity. So what will be the force? Force is going to be f equal to m times dv dt because remember acceleration is rate of change of velocity. So we are using dv by dt there. So substituting we get ddt of 20t which is basically going to be 20. So finally the force is going to be 20m here, right? So this is how you can calculate the force using the formula f equal to dp by dt. Now here's an interesting homework question for you. Let's say there are two balls of mass 1 kg and 2 kg and identical forces are applied on each ball for the same amount of time. Now can you tell me which ball will gain more velocity and which ball will have more momentum after this time. So do let me know your answers by posting it in the comments below. I'm looking forward to reading your answers. Remember you need to answer two questions. Which ball will gain more velocity and which ball will have more momentum. So do put your answers in the comments below. I hope Newton's second law of motion is crystal clear to you now and now you know when to use the equation f equal to delta p by delta t or dp by dt and when to use the equation f equal to ma. Remember f equal to ma is based on the assumption that mass of the body should be constant which wasn't the case for the rocket launch. And if you like this video do hit the like button and share it out with your friends. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button for our channel and click on the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. And do check out our website manuchaacademy.com and our Android app Manucha Academy. The links are given below. Here you'll find full courses on physics, chemistry, biology, maths, coding and artificial intelligence. So do check the links below because in these courses we have live classes, interactive videos, quizzes, questions, mock tests and revision notes. So do share it out with your friends, check out the links and stay connected with us and keep learning.